all to the Universal Code of Conduct Enforcement Guidelines Roundtable. Uh, my name is Sally and my pronouns are she and her. And I've had the pleasure of working alongside the Enforcement Drafting Committee for the last little while. And I would love to take a moment to introduce you all to your panelists for today. Um, so if we could go through the room and if you could introduce yourself, your pronouns, and how you were involved with Wikimedia and the UCOC. Can we please start off with Ruby? Hi. Hi. And I think we might be having a little bit of technical difficulties with uh, Ruby's uh, connection at the moment. So we'll just pause there for a second. And maybe if we can skip to Barkeep, if you could introduce yourself and then we'll jump back to Ruby. Sure, hi, uh, I am an editor uh, who goes by Barkeep or Addison Bryant. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, I primarily edit English Wikipedia where I serve as an administrator and I'm currently on the English Wikipedia Arbitration Committee uh, and I am excited to be on the UCC Enforcement Guidelines uh, Drafting Committee and now the Revision Committee. Thank you so much Barkeep. I'm going to pass it off to MJL next. And I think we may have some connection issues with MJL as well. Ray, would you be able to go next? Sure, hello, cool. I am Ray, I don't use name Vermont. Uh, I am a steward, admin, check user on two projects, and I also work on the Movement Communications team. I am part of the Revisions Committee, and I was part of the Phase 2 Drafting Committee as well. And I use they, them pronouns. Thank you so much, Ramon. We're going to try to jump back to Ruby at this moment. And perhaps it could just be myself. Patrick, are you able to hear Ruby? No, I think Ruby must be having some connection issues. Okay, and maybe we could try back MJL if you're able to introduce yourself. MJL was disconnected and is currently waiting to be let back in. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Ruby and MJL are having some issues um, with connection here, so we'll um, uh, hopefully introduce them when they're, they're back. Alrighty. So Sally, I could jump in and do, do my uh, short history of UCOC here, if, if you'd like. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Patrick. No. So Gretchen, if you don't mind uh, just uh, putting the slides back to uh, slide four there. Uh, so yeah, I think that most um, folks are at least aware of the term UCOC. Um, they've probably um, seen it show up in different places, but I think there's probably some viewers who haven't heard about the UCOC at all. And so um, we'd like to just do a quick history of UCOC and then we can go back to our panelists for questions. Um, so the origins of UCOC were really um, uh, from the movement strategy process. So we've um, uh, probably some of you participated in that process maybe, but it took place uh, 2016 to 2018 um, and really talked to Wikimedians around the world to try and see what um, progress they'd like to see the movement make uh, in the next um, 10, 10 to 15 years. 
And one of the recommendations was to create a code of conduct. And um, uh, the specific recommendation was uh, create a code of conduct in collaboration with communities to provide a universal baseline of acceptable behavior in the entire movement. Um, Gretchen, are you able to um, advance the slides for me? Apologies to the viewers. Uh, we'll go back a few there, Gretchen. Back again. Sorry, folks. There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, next slide, please, Gretchen. So after that recommendation came out, um, it was really a matter of sort of trying to talk to communities about what their priorities might be uh, for a universal code of conduct. Um, so um, 19 different communities took place in some initial conversations in their own languages on their own wikis, um, talking about what they'd love to see from a code of conduct and what they really didn't want to see from a code of conduct. Um, from there, we put together uh, the first drafting committee, um, and uh, we had folks from around the movement um, from different roles come in and start um, throwing around ideas and creating a, a first draft. Um, we had the community review that first draft, a lot of really, really good constructive input, um, and um, the drafting committee was able to make some revisions. Um, from there, we asked the board to um, consider this uh, code of conduct, and uh, they were quite happy uh, with it and decided to ratify it, and that was last year in 2021. Uh, next slide, please, Gretchen. Um, I think most of you who have been involved in policies, uh, either enforcing them or writing them, know that a good policy isn't quite enough. You do need to have some guidance uh, for the people uh, using the policy about how it should be enforced. And in our movement, we have many different conduct policies across our projects, um, hundreds uh, of different uh, policies. We have very different uh, ways of enforcing policy in our communities, um, from very large um, um, established systems and large Wikipedias to more informal, more social systems in some of our smaller Wikipedias. Um, so it's important to, to try and write some guidelines to help our communities um, uh, mesh together some of those practices uh, in a way that works for the UCOC. Um, so many more consultations, surveys, discussions uh, with communities. We have a second drafting committee come up with um, uh, some enforcement guidelines. And um, again, uh, we brought a draft in front of the community and the community had a lot of um, uh, different feedback on it. Uh, the committee then made some more revisions, and um, we had a full community vote on the guidelines. Uh, next slide, please. So we had a fairly good participation in the vote. Um, it was about 56, 57 percent people supporting, uh, about 40 percent, 41 percent of people opposing. The vote also allowed people to uh, give some comments about what they liked or didn't like about these enforcement guidelines. So after um, reviewing these comments and the vote, uh, the Board of Trustees um, saw that there were some areas of concern in these um, enforcement guidelines. So they asked a revisions committee to be put in place um, to hopefully make some changes uh, and improvements um, to these areas of concern. Uh, next slide, please, Gretchen. So here's a timeline that we're in the middle of right now. Um, the revisions committee is um, working on some areas uh, of the guidelines to try and make some changes and um, some improvements. Um, there's also been a uh, readability and translatability um, uh, review of the a document. That was one of the feedback, uh, pieces of feedback that the committee got. Um, I'm just gonna outline some areas, specific areas that the committee has been looking at. Um, one aspect is training around the UCOC. Um, how it should work, who should provide it, uh, whether it should be mandatory or not for certain groups. Um, these are concerns that community members had. Next slide, please. Another one was um, trying to make sure that people are aware of the policy and uh, how they should sort of agree to it. And so um, this is called affirmation. And so the committee is looking at some of the challenges around affirmation. Um, uh, right now, we don't have sort of formal uh, acceptance of uh, policies in our movement. And so uh, with the exception of the terms of use, of course. And so um, the committee is trying to navigate some ways to increase awareness of the uh, UCOC without uh, making it a divisive issue. 
Next slide, please. Another area is um, when cases are reported um, uh, about um, violations or potential violations of the UCSC, um, it's quite difficult to, to strike a balance between uh, protecting the confidentiality of a person who's making a report and um, keeping the person who has been reported uh, informed or um, um, let them know about what's happening with the process. Um, so the uh, revisions committee is really spending some time trying to figure out uh, that aspect um, in a way that um, works within our movements within the limitations of a volunteer system, um, but also um, provides some fairness in the process. Next slide, please. So the revisions committee is hard at work right now, um, and they will be um, presenting their uh, new revisions to the enforcement guidelines in September. And so we'll definitely be um, letting everyone know about that review um, in the beginning of September. And we'd love to have folks drop by, um, give their opinions on some of the changes. Um, the committee will be again going back uh, to incorporate uh, feedback they get from this process. Um, so um, we'd love to hear uh, whether people uh, like the changes, don't like the changes, or would like to see uh, um, something different. And so um, we'd love to see you all in September. But I'm going to stop taking up all the time of the committee here, and um, I'm going to give things back to Sally um, to open things up for questions. So I see a lot of folks in the chat. Please drop your questions in there. We'll get them in the queue. Uh, we've got a few uh, pre-submitted questions we're going to start with. But um, yeah, we'd love to see any questions you have uh, in the queue, and we'll get them into the mix here. Sorry, I, Ruby has indicated that she's trying to get back in, and so I don't know if there's someone technically who can help her rejoin the room. Very good. Gretchen will uh, hopefully help uh, Ruby get in. Um, but I'll give things back over to Sally. Awesome. Thank you so much, um, Patrick. We'll get started with some of the questions here. And as folks join us, we'll be um, sure to let them introduce themselves. Oh, we have Ruby back. Ruby, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. Um, would you be able to introduce yourself in a quick 30 seconds, perhaps? Yeah, my name is Ruby Damishi Brown. So um, I'm from Ghana. My pronouns are she and her. I'm part of the Open Foundation West Africa community, and I'm happy to be so happy uh, with the drafting of the enforcement guideline revision. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ruby. And uh, we'll get started. We'll jump into our questions. And MJ, I will, we will give you a chance to introduce yourself when we get to you. Uh, and one of the first questions are, is, what are some interesting things you have learned about policy enforcement in Wikimedia communities as part of working on the committee? And I'd love to start off by hearing what, what you think of that, Ruby. Et donc, le comité de révision est en train de travailler à présent. Ils vont, ils vont donc présenter une nouvelle version des directives d'application du septembre, début septembre. Et nous sommes ravis de pouvoir partager nos avis en tant que nous avons les personnes Apprécie which is what I've been part of this committee helping to draft um, this enforcement guidelines. And being a member of this committee, I've learned so much and I see why it's relevant for us to have such an universal code of conduct that all, all of us can um, make use of. And one interesting thing about this policy is the fact that the committee itself is made up of um, different representative of people and that includes WMS staff, volunteers from different regions and individuals from minority, minority um, groups, bringing that kind of diversity of views and perspective when 
uh, we deliberating on issues. And that is the whole beauty of, of this committee because we have that kind of um, diversified uh, understanding uh, um, in dealing with um, some of these issues or helping to understand and digest um, some of these community feedbacks that we get um, whenever we reach out to the community. Um, this makes um, the policy very um, intriguing and helps us to um, deliberate and examine issues from different perspectives. Another interesting thing that um, I think I've learned from this policy was that we didn't do it in isolation of the community itself. We, from every stage of um, the drafting, we engage the community, we digest their feedback, and we see how we we are able to incorporate these feedbacks into um, drafting this um, policy. And so, I, 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 this is this is one of the things. These are some of the things that intrigues me about um, being a member of this community. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ruby. And, and yes, I really hear what you're saying about the diverse opinions um, being brought towards not only from the community, but also uh, the members of the committee. Thank you so much for, for sharing some of those insights there. Um, Barkeep, I would love to hear some of your thoughts to that question. And please let me know if, if you'd like me to repeat it. Uh, no, that's quite all right. Um... You know, I think something that I'm not sure I would say I I have learned because I knew it, but I've learned a lot of the specifics of um, just how uh, both how similar um, enforcement is in a lot of ways across um, the movement that a lot of policy is very similar. There might be small differences in details um, across the movement, but policy itself and guidelines and how we kind of uh, handle UCOC is largely the same. Uh, there are some notable differences in that, but but pretty similar. But even with kind of similar wording, uh, the way communities actually uh, implement and practice that um, can be fairly different, that there's a, uh, that they at least have fairly different outcomes. Um, and so that has been an interesting piece for me. And I would say, kind of learning, I, I did not know much about how uh, affiliates have uh, handled kind of their UCOC type enforcement pieces. And so that has been a really interesting piece uh, for me to learn uh, through this process, um, because we do have, uh, a, at least we have a couple of people, Ruby and another member who are both uh, members of affiliates and can speak to that experience. Thank you, Barkeep. And um, would also love to hear from MJL if you're, are you connected at the moment? Uh, I believe so. Awesome. Would you also be able to quickly introduce yourself before we jump into your answer? Um, yes, my name is MJL, uh, pronouns they, them. I am a editor on English Wikipedia and I do YouTube as well on the side. Um, and could, uh, Sally, could you please repeat the question for me? Because it's been a while since I, I want to make sure I answer it right. Of course. What are some interesting things you have learned about policy enforcement in Wikimedia communities as part of working on the committee? Uh, I definitely have learned that I, going into it, I understood that everybody has different opinions about policy enforcement. And then, but being on the committee, I re I learned that people really have different opinions about policy enforcement, <laughs> um, which I learned that it's been a very interesting hearing the community's perspective on a lot of different things. Um, so I that's definitely been probably the most interesting because I thought I understood the community's position. I can on policy enforcement pretty well, but honestly, no, and it's been a humbling experience. Thank you, MJL, for sharing your, your insights there. We're going to jump into our second question, which is, what kinds of changes have you been working on during the revision process? And I'd love to start off by hearing some of your experiences there, Vermont. Vermont. 
Uh, sure, yeah. So we had, as many people remember, that vote and the rather large consultation period and a lot of feedback that we have. Uh, basically, all of the changes we've been making has been towards the areas that were highlighted by community discussion in those in the consultation period. And working to address concerns and also to update the document with other plans that we had. It was not a finished document. It was a draft. Uh, and that includes, as I think some people have asked about in the comments here, the information on affirmation and training. Uh, we put a lot of effort into those weeks of just talking about affirmation and training and making sure that we get it right. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Vermont. And Barkeep, do you have um, some thoughts to add on that? What, what are some of the changes you have been working on during the revision process? Yeah, I, um, for me, uh, I think, uh, you know, Rosie's email was a, or Rosie's statement I, was a great kind of charge for us. Um, and I was, I really appreciated the board uh, saying, uh, we appreciate that 58% of the participants uh, liked this, but but we really hear the concerns of that other, you know, 40, uh, 41, 42% and want to see if we can't do better. And so uh, I think there have been some easy fixes, such as around training, where, uh, I, I mean, we had some changes to make, um, but, you know, they were fairly easy for us to hammer out. I think that uh, we have had some more difficult uh, pieces, such as um, balancing the rights of people who are being harassed uh, with the kind of uh, more general right to understand uh, what someone what you're being accused of, uh, and so right, so that is a tricky piece, and so so I would say that's there. Something that we have uh, started to do, but I think we have a, a lot more work to do, and so. Um, and looking forward to community feedback to help us do this is, I think, uh, kind of in the organizational part and on uh, making it uh, easier to read and uh, easier to translate, I think, uh, and just easier to understand because uh, we saw during the initial feedback that committee members had one understanding, but a very, but of certain pieces of text, but that the community fairly consistently read something in a different light. And so I think we have some more opportunities to um, to fix those areas as we kind of uh, get some community feedback and, uh, and uh, continue our work after uh, in the kind of second phase of the revisions. Thank you, Barkeep, and really appreciate that insight about what you've been working on in this revision process. Ruby, do you have some, some other perspective to add? I, I think um, he said it all. I think um, basically what uh, what we've been doing is trying to fix um, some of these issues, um, fixing the wording, making sure that the phrases, are, like the sentences have that clarity uh, in it. So basically these are some of the things and how we are incorporating community feedback into the text that we drafted. Yeah, thank you. Marie. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, folks. We're going to jump to a question from the audience here. Um, and we can maybe start off with MJL. The question is, beside the board's decision, what are some things that you personally or the community committee felt needed to improve? MJL? Um, I definitely thought the uh, training uh, aspect, the training and the affirmations were probably going into it, I, I understood could have been a lot better and a lot more, had a lot more improvements. So I was honestly kind of excited when the, um, the board made that statement. Cause I was like, okay, I'm, I'm really glad we can tackle this again. Cause we got, we had a lot of good feedback about that. And it was definitely clear that the committee's intentions, which were one thing versus what we ended up releasing didn't exactly like line up and so having the ability to actually make it more clear to our original vision was something i was really excited about thanks so much and, and would love to also hear from vermont um and please let me know if you'd like me to repeat the question uh sure yeah there's 
a lot that we have worked on improving. Uh, and unfortunately, one of the things about doing a big community consultation about a 15 page document is that there are areas of the document that need improvement that don't get much attention because people are only focused on the big stuff like affirmation, training, and right to be heard. Uh, we have done a lot of other changes. We've fixed wording. We've clarified things. We have, uh, what else is there? We've talked about like how we handle different types of cases, how existing enforcement structures handle them and how we want to write our recommendations in line with that. Uh, yeah. Thank you, folks. Okay, we'll jump back into some of these questions here. Um, what are some differences in community practices between different projects that you have observed? I um, would love to start off with Barkeep and hear your thoughts on that. Um, I think that uh, different communities have uh, pretty different uh, levels of, of so I think uh, different communities have different levels of kind of uh, community involvement in enforcement. And so, uh, you know, some of our larger wikis uh, will have multiple places that enforcement will happen, where uh, some of our wikis have an arbitration committee that um, our NGL, I think you're, uh, you might want to mute there. Um, so uh, some of our uh, communities have arbitration committees, as I indicated, but even arbitration committees can have uh, can have different uh, roles there. And then, uh, you know, I think the tolerance for or ability to have kind of private complaints is also a major difference that I see across the movement. And I'll kind of stop there. Thank you. Apologies for that, Burkeep. I think we missed the, the last part with some feedback there. Are you able to just mention the last part that you were speaking yeah, to? The, the, uh, pr the private, um, the ability to kind of hear complaints privately at any level, um, you know, and how much ability and or um, community policy support there is for kind of private complaints is something that is uh, very different across our movement. Awesome, thank you. We're gonna jump into another question from the audience, which is how does the committee mitigate possible Anglo-centrism in the worldview and process? For example, today's expectation for everybody to state their pronouns is incredibly Anglo-centric, also posted on movementstrategy.org. Um, would love to start off by hearing your thoughts on that, Ruby. <laughs> this is already had one. <laughs> Can someone take, take the lead on that? For sure. Um, is there, Barkeep, would you be able to answer some of this question? Uh, I mean, I am quite uh, sympathetic to the complaints here, uh, right? That we have uh, three of our four panel members here are, are uh, in the United States. And so, uh, you know, that is certainly a concern. Uh, we do have uh, members from other continents, uh, right? So besides Ruby, uh, there we do have people that are um, that are living, working part of communities that are outside of uh, the Anglo world. Uh, we have also been uh, reaching out to um, you know groups with inside the. Uh, Wikimedia Foundation, as the Wikimedia Foundation has really kind of expanded their their workforce to uh, make sure that it is not so Anglo-centric to get some feedback on that. Uh, you know, in terms of the pronouns, that is tricky, right? Because uh, I would say the first phase um, had, I, I would say the enforcement has been slightly, has had a slightly, as a percentage, has had slightly more um, Anglo-centric um, contributors. Uh, there, the first phase where like things like 
uh, where a lot of the kind of gender and pronoun pieces came out um, did kind of come out of that piece. And so I think that is an interesting part and something for the movement to continue to talk about. And I hope there's a really robust discussion about that when we kind of reach uh, the let's take a, a look at the UCOC as a whole um, and see what revisions need to be made, which the board has indicated. I, I think there's definitely a lot of work that can be done and I'm hopeful that after we see the UCOC in action for a little bit, we will uh, be able to evaluate that and see what parts are working and which parts need to be adjusted to uh, be more culturally sensitive for the entire movement. Thank you, Burkeep. And would also love to hear from Patrick on this question. Hi, and yeah, I guess I didn't even introduce myself at the beginning of this. I'm really sorry, folks. Uh, my name is Patrick Early. I'm uh, a lead project manager, uh, sorry, policy manager with the trust and safety team. And I've been working closely with um, UCOC for a while. But I do want to mention that this is definitely one of the concerns that um, definitely the Board of Trustees um, pointed out is that, you know, it's not just sort of this specific area of pronouns and gender, but that uh, the whole document um, for the enforcement guidelines uh, was difficult to translate into some languages. It had some idiom and some structures that um, did not translate very well. And um, readability in general could be improved as well. And I don't want to criticize our committee members um, when I say this, but you know, it, it, it is hard to write a document that is um, universally translated, uh, translatable, um, perhaps you know, almost impossible. But um, we have been trying to support the committee in um, uh, having uh, some of our more experienced translators at the foundation uh, take a look at the document and review it. Uh, we've also had folks with um, academic um, um, uh, experience and, and um, education on the general concept of translatability um, take a, a look at the document and make some suggestions. So it's, yeah, it's a difficult one. I mean, I think to get a document that is, you know, universal, as in the title of the Universal Code of Conduct, is a challenge and probably an aspirational goal. Um, but we have to, to try to get close to it. Um, and sorry if I've insulted committee members by saying their, their, their work was not readable. It was definitely readable, but it was it could see some improvements. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and we're going to answer another question from the audience. It is, how are small wiki projects represented in, ta in taking decisions in the UCOC? Um, Vermont, are you able to start us off with that question? Sorry, what was that question? How are small wiki projects represented in taking decisions in the UCOC? In taking decisions. Well, the difficulty here is that this is, we are writing, or rather rewriting, the uh, enforcement guidelines for the Universal Code of Conduct. This is the revisions committee. We have not written the universal code of conduct. We have written the enforcement guidelines. One of the things that we have definitely focused on is how can we best integrate the benefits of the UCOC with existing enforcement structures? So like, how do we create a functional document without accidentally destroying the way that projects do things? And what we have is people from a bunch of different language projects. We have someone from the affiliations committee. We have someone from ARBCOM. We have me, I'm a steward. We have someone who's a bunch of people who have these very varied experiences. Uh, yes, we have three people in the U.S., but all of them have very different histories and enforcement processes and very different understandings of them. We don't have any small wiki admins, but we do have who are people who are familiar with both small and large wiki processes. And we've been able to, I believe, at least write a document that supports them without disturbing the way they engage with their workflows. Thank you. Appreciate your perspective on that one. And we'll head back into the questions here. Um, in what was the most difficult topic area you faced when working on the guidelines? And we'd love to hear from all of the panelists on this question. What was the most difficult topic area you faced when working on the guidelines? Um, Ruby, can we start with you? Sure. <laughs> this is very interesting. I mean, we've had um, difficult um, instances where we've dealt with it. and But uh, one of the most difficult um, faces that I think for me we, we felt was 
when we're dealing with some real cases and seeing how these cases will be dealt with in real life and deliberating on these cases some of the thoughts that came into mind was how can we ensure that um, third party reporters or victims are protected while reporting cases, especially when the case has a potential of putting people at risk when reported or putting the victim at risk. We also, also like, how do we deal with a third person reporting a case when the parties involved, they don't see anything wrong with what they're doing. For instance, we have two individuals on Wiki abusing themselves or using abusive words throwing some chats on the talk pages and all that and these two individuals don't see anything wrong with the kind of or the choice of words that they're using and this is a case and this case is reported by a third party who sees everything wrong with this so dealing with this issue um it becomes very complex and and very cumbersome because i mean we in different we the wiki space is made up of different communities what might look like an insult to one community can be a greeting for another community so how do we even differentiate that so dealing with some of these cases or drafting guidelines for some of these cases become very complex and another instance is how to deal with vandals of course um, there are many things that we cannot avoid how do we stop people from vandalizing or abusing this um reporting opportunity that we've made for community members we also want to ensure that staff and volunteer time are not wasted in, in handling things that are not even real in the first place so this is also like some some of the difficulty um that we foresee and these cases may look very simple when dealing with or maybe when you read about it it looks very simple but when you bring it to real life like practically how what steps are we going to deal uh, what steps are we going to take in dealing with these issues we, re we realize the complexity of it and so this is like some of the things that are identified as kind of like a very tricky and um, <laughs> difficult area yeah basically yeah. Thank you, Ruby. I really appreciate you bringing contextually how every case can definitely look different in different parts of the world. Thank you so much. Um, would also, we would love to hear from all the panelists on this question. Um, MJL, what was the most difficult part, or sorry, difficult topic area you faced when working on the guidelines? Uh, the right to be heard definitely for me was, uh, that was a lot of difficult stuff because I... I felt like the community was asking us to solve some problems that were extremely, extremely complicated and that the community itself didn't have answers to. So I was um, more than happy to receive feedback about it. Uh, I, you know, we're still uh, ironing out a lot of the kinks with the right to be heard. Uh, I can't. It's, it's definitely dwarfed anything else that we've worked on, even during the first go around of, of drafting. I can't, cause we, I know we had a lot of contentious things that we had to work out in the first round. Um, but this, the revisions committee has, with the right to be heard is definitely, it's definitely been a very, 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 very complicated process and contentious. Thank you. And we'll go next to Vermont and then Barkeep. Vermont, what was the most difficult topic area you faced when working on the guidelines? Honestly, this would be the training bit. Uh, we put a lot of effort into training. There was a lot of discussion over... What's the good wording for this? We had a lot of talks about the specific content that we wanted involved in training and the level of specificity we wanted to give to that content. Because at the same time, we were kind of rebuilding the use the u4c policy and how the u4c building committee is going to look and they're going to be the ones who actually make the training and there were a lot of discussions over okay what is the training for are we doing levels are we doing modules who are we recommending take which trainings it was all really helpful so yeah thank you vermont and barkeep would love to hear your thoughts i mean i think uh mjl is correct that the 
uh, balancing of rights has been is one of the trickiest things. But for me, uh, my answers would go back to the phase one pieces. I think uh, the two pieces that I would like to identify that have been hardest for me were uh, first uh, kind of making sure that enforcement processes that are uh, happening across the movement or for universal code of conduct like behavior, even if it wasn't labeled UCOC enforcement, right? A lot of a lot of projects are already um, actively enforcing these areas, and let's make sure that nothing we do will stop that work from happening, right? That we are not going to undermine uh, local local processes. And this goes back to the question of how do we counter Anglo centrism? We need if. Uh, right. So an important principle that one of our members introduced was the kind of uh, uh, I I'm going to I can't remember the English phrase uh, and the she talks about it in French, uh, but is basically the idea that local uh, that enforcement should happen at the most local level possible in most circumstances. And uh, so kind of respecting that idea and making sure that that played out throughout the document was super hard. And then I would say everything around uh, the Universal Code of Conduct Coordinating Committee, commonly known as the U4C, was incredibly hard. And it was so hard that essentially towards the end of the process, the committee threw up its hands and said, this is so hard that we need to have a whole separate group that is going to do this themselves um, after we're done with our work. Um, and I think that reflects just how hard and complicated and involved um, that w what is going to be. Thanks, Barkeep. We're going to pass it off to another um, audience question here, and perhaps we could start with MJL. And it is, in what areas do you or committee think community input is lacking? Um, hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, I think a lot of... Hmm... I think I actually don't know because it's been in general, like most of the, I would have loved to see more community input on pretty much everything. Like that's for me, it's like, I would have, I feel like it's been a very, the community has been very disengaged with the process, despite it probably being one of the more important things happening in the Wikimedia movement at the moment. Um, there's definitely um, from the technical code of conduct and the um and their committee i would have loved to see more media wiki developers uh you know weigh in that's definitely i feel like we haven't gotten a lot of feedback on how the technical code of conduct is going to interface with the ucoc and i feel like that's probably one of the uh, i would love to see more uh you know feedback from from folks covered by that Thank you. And would love to open that space up to other folks on, on who are panelists here. In what areas do you or committee think community input is lacking? Are there any other thoughts? Um, please feel free to, to, to speak openly right now and I can then move on to another question after. Yes, Barkley, please. I, yeah, I have a thought. Um, I, think, I think it's a really hard piece because I think uh, we have um, we want to provide lots of opportunities for community feedback, but I am hearing uh, from multiple communities that they are feeling uh, burned out from the amount of um, the amount of feedback. And so I think we're just having to walk a tough line because we genuinely want community feedback, uh, but we also want to respect that people are feeling like, boy, haven't I already done that? And I think uh, especially um, that you know, there were lots of people who were talking about the needs, uh, the, the need to kind of balance rights between uh, people in the first phase, and it didn't. And that feedback wasn't listened to until it kind of came out uh, through the comments of the ratification process. I mean, it was listened to. That's not quite uh, fair, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't acted on in a way that uh, really felt good until uh, until the board statement, and so. Uh, just kind of want to recognize uh, that that complexity for the community there. 
Thank you, Barkeep. Um, were there any last panelists that would like to, to speak to that question before we move on? Awesome. Thank you so much. So I do see that we are nearing time here um, and would love to pass it back to Patrick um, to, to uh, yeah, pass it back to Patrick. Yeah, I'll just close out. But um, I think uh, I just got a message um, from Vermont who actually had something to add on the Anglo-centric uh, aspect. So Vermont, do you want to hop in and just uh, make a comment there? Sure. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I don't think either MJL or I had the opportunity to respond to the Anglocentric and pronouns related comment. I understand that there is a large issue with Anglocentrism in the way that we have formed a lot of people who are based in the US. We do have a lot of people who are not based in the US, but the issue stands there is a balance to be made in every foundation related committee between experiential diversity and geographic diversity. I feel like we have definitely hit the experiential aspect, but we have not exactly hit the geographic aspect. What I will also say is that the idea that Respecting people's pronouns and how they want other people to refer to them is Anglocentric. That idea is patently unacceptable in the Wikimedia movement and not something that I'm going to address seriously. Because we have a very clear history of maintaining a degree of tolerance and acceptance of other people's identities independent of people's traditional cultural beliefs. And on Wikimedia projects, you have the right to be respected for how you want other people to refer to you as. Thanks. Thanks for that, Vermont. Yeah, it's um, definitely an issue that, um, uh, you know, is something that our communities are struggling with as well. And um, I'm, I'm glad that we have a committee that is, is going to tackle um, that issue. It is, it is incredibly difficult. Um, I'm going to close out um, our presentation today. I want to really um, uh, thank um, Ruby, MJL, Barkeep, and Vermont for joining today. Um, they've put in tremendous amounts of work um, uh, with their other fellow committee members and to do this presentation was something extra, but um, they thought it was uh, quite important and I agree it is important uh, to help Wikimania attendees understand where we are with the process. Uh, we saw a question earlier on about, um, you know, how can I give some feedback on these upcoming revisions? And I just wanna remind folks that uh, we are having a, um, uh, community review of the revisions in the month of September. Uh, we have tentatively put uh, September 7th as the opening date. Um, just be aware we might have to shift that, but it looks like um, we should be good to go on September 7th. Uh, we will be working with um, our movement um, strat strategy and governance team to make sure that um, we get as much messaging out about that consultation as possible um, so that everyone knows how to take part. Um, Again, if you have something that you really think you want on the table, um, you know, there's many ways to reach out to the team, um, but um, we'll uh, definitely communicate through uh, on Wiki, um, social media, um, the new movement and movement strategy forum um, as well. And um, we'll do as, as much as we can to make sure that everyone has um, both the information they need to take part, um, but um, uh, ability to take part in different ways. Um, so we're hoping to have some con conversation hours uh, so people can take part verbally, um, as well as on wiki consultations and um, uh, gathering information through uh, other channels. Um, so we're trying to make this as, as uh, accessible as possible. Um, I see my little counter is getting down to 15 seconds. So again, I just want to thank uh, all of our Wikimedia attendees for coming. Um, you know, policy can be a dry topic, but we saw some great engagement and uh, great ideas, great questions. And so um, I'll just wish everyone a uh, happy Thursday. And um, I believe this is one of the last sessions of the day. So if you're tired, um, get off the computer, go for a walk, and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.